Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. As is well known, the Song Dynasty in China emphasized culture over martial prowess, leading many to perceive it as a dynasty lacking in pride and submission. However, the humiliating humiliation of Jing Kong event swept the Northern Song Dynasty into the tides of history. The downfall of the Northern Song Dynasty was not a coincidence, its accumulated weakness offered an opportunity for the Jurchen Jin Dynasty in the north. Soon, the Jin forces rode southward like a tide. Faced with this formidable enemy, the Northern Song Dynasty was utterly defenseless. Emperor Huizong, Emperor Qinzong, and numerous imperial relatives were all captured by the Jin forces and endured agonizing torment. The Jin dynasty had a unique surrender ceremony for captives, known as the yielding the sheep ritual, which many found unbearable. What exactly was this yielding the sheep ritual, and why did many women choose to end their lives after undergoing it? The yielding the sheep ritual emerged during the downfall of the Northern Song dynasty when emperors Huizong and Qinzong were captured. However, its origins trace back to the Zhou dynasty. According to historical records, during King Wu's campaign against King Zhou, King Wu emerged victorious. King Zhou's own brother, Duke Weizi, was stripped of his upper garment, his hands tied behind his back. Behind him, a person led a sheep, while another held a spear. Duke Weizi kneeled and prostrated himself, crawling on the ground to meet King Wu. Duke Weizi employed this form to demonstrate his sincere submission. As a result, King Wu pardoned Duke Weizi and restored his former title. This action by Duke Weizi later became known as the yielding the sheep ritual. Additionally, sheep were considered less valuable than cattle in ancient agricultural societies. While cattle were used for plowing, and thus were protected, sheep were not. They were viewed not as treasures but as a source of food. Therefore, leading a sheep came to symbolize submission. In the context of the yielding the sheep ritual, surrendering individuals would be stripped of their clothing, bare their upper bodies, and be draped with sheepskin. A rope would be tied around their necks, and they would be led forward, subjected to the comments of onlookers. Clearly, the captives at this point resembled lambs awaiting slaughter on the butcher's block. To the victors, the captives had lost their basic human dignity and could be treated as the victors pleased. In the context of Chinese culture, there has always been the saying, a scholar's life is not to be humiliated. Thus, the yielding the sheep ritual was a highly humiliating surrender ceremony for the defeated. Many people couldn't understand why a northern pastoral tribe could crush the northern Song dynasty. By that time, the Jin dynasty was already powerful. In order to counter the Liao dynasty, the Northern Song had formed a maritime alliance with the Jin dynasty. The treaty explicitly stipulated that neither the Northern Song or the Jin dynasty would accept each other's defectors or rebellious generals. However, after jointly defeating the Liao dynasty, the Northern Song began to accept defectors from the Jin dynasty. Infuriated, the Jin dynasty demanded that the Northern Song surrender the heads of those who had defected. The Northern Song not only refused but also allied with the Mongols to resist the Jin dynasty. In a fit of rage, the Jin dynasty dispatched 100,000 troops directly toward the capital city of Kaifeng. For the Jin dynasty, the fertile lands of the Northern Song were highly coveted for potential development. The Northern Song dynasty, plagued by internal chaos and prioritizing culture over military might, was defenseless. In this context, the Jinkong incident was inevitable. In August 1125, led by Wanyan Zonghan, the Jin dynasty launched an invasion with 100,000 strong troops against the Song dynasty. In 1126, the first year of Jinkong, the Jin forces successfully crossed the Yellow River and advanced towards Kaifeng. Emperor Huizong was terrified and quickly abdicated in favor of Emperor Qinzong. However, this did not change the outcome. Soon, both Emperor Huizong and Emperor Qinzong were captured, signifying the complete collapse of the Northern Song dynasty. At the time, apart from the two emperors, the imperial palace, 
royal family, and consorts all became captives. Wan Yen Zonghan ordered the imperial dragon robes to be removed from the emperors and reduced them to commoners. Also present with Emperor Qinzong was Li Ruashue, a minister of the Ministry of Personnel. When he saw the emperor's humiliation, he couldn't hold back his anger. Wan Yen Zonghan had recognized Li Ruashue's talents and wished to employ him. However, upon witnessing Li Ruashue's vehement condemnation, he changed his mind. Li Ruashue was eventually executed by having his throat cut. The pain of losing one's country and the humiliation of seeing one's monarch degraded were so overwhelming that a loyal minister like Li Ruashue chose not to survive in such a world. Li Ruashue's actions also revealed the integrity of certain literati during the Northern Song dynasty. Li Ruashue was among the many literati who suffered the yielding the sheep ritual. His unyielding spirit and indignation were his response to the humiliation. For the women who underwent this surrender ceremony, the disgrace was even more unbearable, and many chose to end their lives. To highlight their power and humiliate the Song court, the Jin dynasty decided to subject the captive Song royals to a public parade using the yielding the sheep ritual. Moreover, they were made to crawl forward while Jin soldiers urged them on and simultaneously lashed them with whips. These captives were stripped of all dignity. This was not the end, after men underwent the yielding the sheep ritual, they were subjected to further torture. Emperor Huizong was even bestowed the title, Duke of Ignoble Virtue, to further emphasize his degradation. He was later imprisoned in Wugua City. For women, the yielding the sheep ritual meant even greater humiliation. In a feudal society where women's social status was extremely low, one can hardly fathom the inhumane treatment a captive woman endured. Empress Zhu Lian was a case in point. Empress Zhu Lian, like others, was captured and being one of the most noble women in the Song dynasty, suffered from hunger and cold. After being taken to the Jin dynasty, in the second year of Jian Yan, she endured the yielding the sheep ritual alongside the two emperors. Empress Zhu Lian was fair and beautiful and had nothing to hide, which aroused the sinister desires of the Jin dynasty's founder. Empress Zhu Lian was subjected to insults and had to undergo a gifted bath in the Jin dynasty's palace. This bath was not a simple cleansing but a process where others would help cleanse her body, and then she would be at the disposal of Jin's monarchs and officials for their amusement. Ancient women adhered to the principles of three obediences and four virtues. Especially, they valued their reputation more than their lives. As a former empress of the country, even if she could return to the Central Plains Kingdom in the future, she would no longer have the face to meet her compatriots. That night, she chose to hang herself, but she was rescued. Yet, Empress Zhu Lian had already determined to die, and she soon seized the opportunity to commit suicide by drowning. With her death, a once empress vanished. If this was the fate of an empress, one can imagine the situation of other consorts and palace maids. Almost all were insulted and divided among the Jin forces, and they had already harbored thoughts of death. When the Jinkong incident occurred, Emperor Huizong's daughter, Princess Maoda, was named by the Jin dynasty's Prince Wanyan Zongwang for marriage. Although she was already married at that time, she couldn't escape the destiny of being given away. The reason behind this was an absurd condition of peace negotiations. And so, the 25-year-old Princess Maoda became the first princess to be given to the Jin dynasty. Upon the Northern Song's downfall, Princess Maoda was escorted north. During this time, Wan Yen Zongwang passed away. Because of her beauty, Princess Maoda was given to a prominent Jin dynasty minister. After undergoing the yielding the sheep ritual, being given away like a possession, and finally enduring humiliation, Princess Maoda chose to commit suicide while in a Jin dynasty camp. These captive women, upholding their integrity, found the indignity unbearable, especially after being subjected to the yielding the sheep ritual and then being given away to other men at will. Their only option was death, to hold on to their pride and honor. Speaking of the virtue of chastity, 
Confucianism has long advocated three obediences and four virtues. This concept emerged during the Western Han Dynasty and became popular. However, during the Warring States period, many believed that women who had married and born children were more desirable to marry, as it indicated their physical health and the absence of misfortune. Even reigning monarchs were willing to marry such women, so the phenomenon of widows remarrying was normal until the Sui and Tang dynasties. It remained so until the Song dynasty when Confucianism's emphasis on female subjugation reached its peak. In the Song dynasty, women were treated more as appendages and commodities of men. They belonged to their fathers at home, their husbands after marriage, their sons after their husbands' deaths, and they could even be bought and sold. In this context, women began to value their chastity even more. According to the Qin dynasty's miscellaneous records of the Zhuaiqing Pavilion, there is an account of a woman who was swept away by a flood. In a moment of danger, a man managed to grab her left hand and save her. However, instead of being grateful, the woman cried even more loudly. She proclaimed that her chastity had been violated because the man had touched her left hand. In a surprising turn of events, the woman decided to cut off her own left arm. Afterward, she walked into the floodwaters and sought death. While the story is extreme, it effectively demonstrates the emphasis ancient women placed on their chastity. Thus, the double affliction of mind and body that the yielding the sheep ritual represented was almost impossible for any woman to bear. Ultimately, they chose extreme ways to bid farewell to the world and preserve their inner innocence. This is History and Culture Channel, like and subscribe are the biggest help and support for us, thank you everyone, see you next time.